Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. On today's episode, we're going to be installing OpenBSD. So a quick note before we get into it. I'm assuming that we've already downloaded the ISO or the, IM or the FS file. And, you know, we've made our install media from it. So I've put it into my computer here and we've booted up. And the blue output is simply the D message output. That's uh, OpenBSD detecting all our hardware, loading all the modules for it and everything. But anyway, we're going to hit I at this prompt to help we want to install. Hit enter. Now, this, the key map is how our keyboard will be detected. It varies between the countries you're in, but in our case, it's US. But if you didn't know, just hit that question mark here and hit enter. <clears throat> so we're going to say US. And basically, the theme throughout the entire install is you type what you want, hit enter. So I'm not going to keep saying that over and over. But anyway, for our host name to identify this on the network, we're going to type ttech. And make sure your host name doesn't have any special characters in it. You know, no underscores, spaces, or hyphens or anything like that. So, okay. <clears throat> this is for our network connectivity. Anything in brackets during the installation means um, that's the default choice. So we only have one interface here, so we're just going to accept the default. This will automatically configure it with dynamic host configuration protocol. Uh, that essentially is just going to give us all of our IP addressing, our mask, our uh, default gateway and everything. If we don't want that dynamically configured, like if this is a server or a firewall or something, we would just type the IP address we want, hit enter, you know, put the mask in at the default gateway. And anyway, though, it's, it's very easy to put it in statically. So we're going to accept, though, dynamic. <coughs> and there we go. We don't need IPv6 at this, in the, at this point. So we'll skip the default. And we're done configuring. At this point, feel free. If you have multiple interfaces, go ahead and type the rest of them. Now, the root account password. This, the root account in Unix is the user that's able to control all parts of the system. So we want to type a good password for this user. And type it twice. SSHD essentially allows the, the system to be controlled over a network. So it could be the internet, we could be on the same LAN as this system. Any of those, you know, are, are what we would do with this. We're actually going to disable it here because it's a big target for bots and attackers. So we're going to go ahead and say no. The X window system allows us to be able to have any kind of graphical interaction with the system. So any windows that we want to move around and things like that. <coughs> we're going to, we'll accept the default of yes. Uh, we don't want it started automatically in this case. We'll type a user, so tman in my case accept the default for full name you can type you know your full name it, it's just you know depending on what you want to do uh, the password make sure it's separate from the root password this adds another layer of security since if the tman account in this case is compromised they don't have the root password they still have another layer to get through but type the same one twice just like before oops again <laughs> type the same one twice <laughs> Okay, uh, our time zone, America, New York, is fine in my case. Now, this is our hard drive here. WD0 is a fine choice for now. Um, if you're installing from a USB, make sure to use the question mark so you know if you're installing to the right disk. But in my case, we booted off of a CD, so we don't have to worry about um, doing that. We'll accept here the default partitioning and formatting. So we'll go ahead and just hit enter on both of those. And it goes ahead and will partition and format it for us. Now the sets are just the different parts of OpenBSD. Now in my case, we'll install them over HTTP. So we'll use that internet connection we set up earlier with the interfaces. If you don't have one, you can type CD0 to install them off the disk. 
This is why sometimes it's important to download the install the ISO because um, they include the sets. That's the reason we do that. We'll install from the network this time though, so we'll say enter on that. We don't need a proxy um, except the default for the server and the path. Okay, um, this is how we make our selection of what software we'd like to install. Um, normally, for a, like for a desktop system at least, I would go ahead and leave all of these selected. If I was making something like a server or a firewall, I would deselect some of them. But in this case, we're just going to accept the default of all of them. Okay, the signature verified line. Uh, an important note, if you're installing on a hard drive that is 2 gigs or less, that's what I've noticed, noticed it on at least, it will actually ask you if you want to continue without verification. And if you're in that situation, just say yes, you know, because it's, it's simply that the drive is small, doesn't have any prefetch area. But anyway... Um, in this case, it seems that at least a 4 gig or above drive does not have that error. So, I just wanted to put that in there so, you know, you're not scratching your head of why you're getting that error. Now, we'll go ahead and pause the video while well, this installs, and I will see you in a second. Alright, welcome back. We're all done installing the sets, so we're going to go ahead and accept the default of done. Set our time correctly. Now it's saving the last few steps. So it's making all the device notes. This just allows the software to talk to the hardware. It's essentially what those do. So we'll go ahead after that is made. And we got one more final step. And this, the relinking to create unique kernel. This was introduced back in OpenBSD 6.2. Essentially, it takes the kernel and it will re like basically mix it up in RAM, the different parts of it, so it's able to be harder to exploit. Essentially, it's it just mixes it up so they don't attackers don't know where the parts of the kernel are. But so. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and pause the video because this will take a little bit of time and I will see you when it finishes. Alright, our final step just finished. So at this point, we would just accept the default of reboot. Um, do make sure you take your install media out of the system. You know, either your CD or your USB. But with all of that, that's how we install a basic OpenBSD system. Now, I encourage you, if you want to go further with OpenBSD after the initial installation, go to openbsd.org and click on the FAQ link. That has a lot of very good information. But with all that, I'm Tyler with T-Tech. I really hope you enjoy this video, and have a nice day.